This video has turned out to be longer than I usually make them because uh, uh, this furnace had several different problems that uh, I went into and rather than uh, break this up into several different videos uh, I thought I would just put it all in one place in one video and uh, down in the description I'm going to write uh, where these different sections start so if you're interested, for, for example, in replacing the flame sensor only, uh, you can go to that section and you won't have to sit and read or look through the whole video. Uh, but what it does cover is the disassembly of the, uh, of the furnace uh, as far as getting the burners and the pilot assembly out, replacing the pilot assembly, the uh, flame sensor, and uh, then there's another section on... Uh, replacing the primary controller and then the last section is uh, uh, replacing the blower controller so uh, look down in the description if you uh, if you want to go to specifically to one of those sections and uh, it'll say in there where in the video that starts okay well I've got another issue with a furnace today uh, this one is a house furnace and um, I've done a lot of reading on it. I've never worked really on a house furnace before, so um, I've been doing a lot of research online and that sort of thing. And uh, I think the issue is it's got a bad controller, and um, I've got one of those on order. So uh, I'm waiting for that to get here. But in the meantime, since I'm going to replace that, I decided I might as well replace uh, the uh, igniter and. Uh, possibly the flame sensor as well and um, you know then we'll go from there and see if see if it's resolved by then or not <clears throat> uh, this is a uh, a Lennox whisper heat G20 and it's old it's like 22 years old um, and it started acting up last winter and uh, what it would do is it would it would still light and heat but it just took a long time to get going it was like it kept trying to start you'd hear the blower start up and then it would quit and then a few seconds later it would try again and turn off try again and turn off and each time that it tried it would run for a little bit longer until finally um, it would start up and, and just work normally but uh, then the next day exactly the same thing every morning it was like it was uh, getting harder and harder to start but we did make it through the winter <clears throat> and uh, but this year it wouldn't start up at all uh, it would um, you'd hear you'd hear something clicking in there and then I looked in the uh, the through the damper and you could see the uh, burner coming on but it would burn for about a minute and then the blower would never come on and then the whole thing would just shut down then it got to the point where the uh, igniter wouldn't even uh, light the pilot you could hear the controller clicking but there was no spark and so we get no flame at all so we're gonna go from there but anyway I, th I thought I'm gonna take this apart now because it's uh, one of the problems with this particular model is it's just a real pain to get this, uh, not the control board, but the uh, flame sensor and the uh, pilot and igniter in there. It's just a royal pain to get to. So uh, anyway, here we go. And I'm going to start with the top cover. The, only, the way to get it off is real easy. You just push up and pull it out. So you've got this piece here that slides in underneath this one. And then the bottom one is pretty much the same thing, just pull up on it, and out it comes. This is the gas valve. This is the damper box. Um, this is the controller that I'm going to replace when it gets here. And buried in here is the um, pilot assembly and the um, flame sensor. and. Uh, I've got to pull all this off of here to get to it, which is just ridiculous. If you look at some of the other furnaces out there, they you pull the covers off and all that stuff is just right in front of you. It's 
real easy, but this one's going to be a pain. So um, this is the cover for the damper, and this comes right off. There's, I've already got the screws pulled out, but you can see the screws are right here. One there, one there, and then this comes right off. And it's got these two wires hooked up to it, and they just pull off. Then you can pull this out, and so then you can see the uh, burners here. These are the burners, these three, and right in here, the, behind this plate where those two screws are, is the pilot, and you can see the igniter back in there. And then right behind that is the flame sensor, and it's really hard to see. It, it took me forever to find it, but it's back there, and um, so the only way I'm going to be able to get to this stuff is to pull all this out of here. Okay, I probably should have said the first thing I did was uh, to turn off the power to the furnace and shut off the gas. And uh, there's the breaker for the furnace right there. That is off. That is off. All right, the first, uh, first thing I need to do is disconnect the gas line. And that's right here. Okay, the next thing I need to do is remove the damper. And uh, there's four screws supposedly holding it in. So I believe what that is, is uh, these four screws here, 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 and here. And then this, this is the damper here. And this unit should come out. Okay, that's the switch cover. Now I'll disconnect these wires and so I can get this out of here. Okay, there are three wires attached to this gas valve that are going to have to come off. And I've already got them all marked as to where they go on here. And I suggest you do the same so you don't get them mixed up. Two screws back up in here, one here, one here, one there and one up there that uh, will have to come out and then this whole unit should pull off. Okay, now this gas uh, manifold doesn't really want to come out of here because it's hitting these. These are kind of bent up on both sides here. I'm not sure why they have it like that, but it looks like it can pretty easily just be bent out. Get that one bent. You know what I think I'm going to do here, just to simplify things, is just remove this pilot line. And that is a 7 sixteenths. That loosens right up. And there we go. 
Okay, now we should be able to get these burners out of here. You got to kind of watch out for these wires while you're pulling things out. Because they kind of want to uh, get caught up on things. I'm going to pull these wires all out of this, uh, this part up here. You can see how they're kind of held in there by these rubber grommets that have little slices in the sides of them. Just pull them all out of there just to get them free. I'll put the grommets back in so I don't lose them. There we go. Now, continue trying to pull this out carefully. You see the pilot uh, line is getting hung up on some of these metal pieces, so it's just you know a slow process of trying to work it out without getting it hung up on everything here. There we go. I want to get a good look at this uh, pilot assembly. Uh, boy, that does look. That does look old and dirty. Look at that flame sensor. So the flame sensor is this electrode here coming straight up. And the, uh, the other one here is the pilot igniter. <clears throat> and this is the pilot itself. <clears throat> uh, one thing if you don't know, you're not, you're not supposed to touch these electrodes. Uh, the oils on your fingers can damage them when the heat hits it and ruin them. So uh, I think that's just regarding the flame sensor, not the igniter, but I'm not sure, so I'm just not going to touch either one of them. Uh, actually, I've got a new flame sensor coming, so it doesn't really matter, but uh, I just wanted to get a good look at this first. You can see how that sits in there. And see that that actually screws on here, as I said earlier. But for now, I'm going to pull this flame sensor out of here. So at least that will be free and then I'll disconnect the wires for the um, for the igniter up here at the controller so I can pull that whole thing the rest of the way out. Okay, so flame sensor, grab it on the bottom here. And there it is, pulls right out. Clean this up a little bit with a vacuum cleaner. Okay, I've got these burners upside down here, and I want to pull this uh, pilot line out of here. But it's kind of hard to work on with them all together, and so they're just clipped together here with these clips. So I'm going to disconnect them from each other. Just uh, be careful when you're trying to, there you go, just wiggle it. There we go, it comes right off. That's the way to do it. Set that off to the side. I'll do the same thing with this one. There we go. I'll just try to unscrew that and see how that goes. There we go. No problem. All right, the new pilot assembly has arrived. So I'm going to go ahead and install that.
Okay, I'll start by removing uh, this piece here which came with it which I don't need because I've already got that on the uh, on uh, the gas line. So I'll just pull that out. Now I'm going to look in here because this came with a, a jet and um, geez looks like there's already one in here. I don't know why they gave me an extra one. Here's the uh, extra one that came with it. And uh, but there's I don't know if you can see that but there's there's already one in there. So anyway, I'll just ignore that. I'll save it in case I ever need it. And uh, now I'll go ahead and attach the the uh, pilot line here. is uh, this right here. Alright, so now the um, I'll attach it to this burner. Here's the burner that it needs to go to. And if you remember, I had uh, the screws on there that were frozen on there. I ground those off with my grinder and uh, that came off pretty nicely so and I got some new screws. I could not find any hex head ones so I got I got Philip Phillips head. Alright that's on there. I should mention also that um, I uh, went ahead and cleaned these off, all these burners. I just, uh, you can use a bottle brush, uh, but you know, it's kind of hard to, kind of hard to fit that in here. Um, actually, it probably wouldn't even work on this one, but I had an old toothbrush that I used, and I just went over these with a toothbrush uh, while it was upside down like this, so all the debris would fall out of it. And then, uh, then I knocked it all out of it just by turning it upside down and giving it a couple of wraps on the workbench there and a lot of uh, debris fell out. So they look pretty clean now and uh, should work better hopefully. Okay now I'm going to uh, put these burners back together here. got the new flame sensor so and again we just need to shove it up in there and there's a, a new wire that will go on it so there it goes Okay, one thing I forgot to mention was that uh, I went ahead and tightened up this nut for the gas line uh, in, in the position that I remembered it being in because once I get this in here that's going to be really hard to tighten up, hard to get a wrench back in there. So now we just need to slide this back in here. Okay, I have a confession to make. I went and recorded the next part of this uh, without apparently without turning the camera on because it's uh, not there. It's the part where I just position the uh, gas uh, manifold in place and get ready to bolt that on. So uh, I apologize <laughs> for that not being there but um, you know that's pretty pretty easy. You took it off so uh, obviously you know how it goes back on so you just put it into position and then um, I do have the part where I screw it in so anyway 
Sorry. All right, that's on there. All right, now I'll reattach the gas line. All right, gas line's reattached. Okay, now we're gonna put the damper door on, which is the most fun part, ha uh ha. -huh. And um, so how we're going to do that is we're going to take this left side piece right here. We're going to take this spring off. There's a little notch that it fits in right there. Just undo that, pull it off like that. And just pull this piece out. Okay, so now I'm going to slide the door into position. So here's the door. The, the side with the gasket is what rests up against this on the top or the bottom. So the bottom part it's going to be on the inside because it has to open this way. So we'll just slide the door in here like this and then we will put this pivot piece on the end. Slide it right in the groove there. Okay, so now we're going to get this into position here. Try to pull this door all the way to the right and then we can push this uh, piece in where it's going to go and slide the pivot piece right through the hole in that bracket there. Just like that. So that's where that's going to go. Then we need to put the spring back on it. And the spring, you can see it has a center piece right in the middle of that hole there. That goes over the slot. Like this. And then this part of the spring needs to be put into position right over that little notch on it and pull that all the way so it's just in position just like that. Okay so on this side which is the side with the motor we've got the same situation here with this pivot piece. You can see the motor has this round piece of metal that's flat on two sides and it will slide right into this pivot piece here. And we have to twist it, there we go, until that lines up. And then put this into position just like that. Put some screws in to hold it in place. Okay, before we go any further, I want to take a look on the left side over here and make sure that this uh, spring is in the right place. And you can see there where the arm is uh, just below that uh, actuator on the switch. So that when this turns, that will activate that switch and that's the way it's supposed to be. You just want to make sure you got that right before you go any further. Okay, now I'm going to put the switch cover plate on and that will go right on here like that.
Right, now I'm going to connect this uh, pilot line on the top here. Always start these things by hand to make sure you don't get them cross-threaded. All right. Okay, now I'm going to reconnect those wires to the gas valve. All right, so now I'm going to replace this controller and I'm going to start here by pulling this one off. All right, so now I'll remove it from the back plate. And there's a screw right here, and then another one on the other end on the bottom here. And then the one on the bottom, you'll notice, also has a ground wire connected to it. And we can start replacing wires. Now, uh, this is all in the instructions telling you which wire goes where. For the old, this is a Robert Shaw uh, 7, 745 and we are replacing it with a Honeywell S8670K and uh, I'll just show you how this goes here. We've got the top one which is uh, MV that one goes to the top one on the Honeywell, which is also MV. Okay, the next one on the list is TH. So we'll pull that one off. And that one goes on the uh, new controller to 24V, which is in position 6. Okay, the next one is PV slash MV. That's this blue wire here. Pull that off. And that is going to go into position uh, MV slash PV. Okay, the next one is another blue wire. It's a TR, which apparently means transformer return. And that one is going to go to 24 V GND, 24 volt ground. All right, we're almost done here. The next one is ground, GND. So we're going to pull that one off. And I've actually got a new ground wire that came with this controller, so I guess I'll use that. And it just goes in the same GND position on the new one, which is number four. Okay, now we've got the PV right here. And there are uh, two uh, orange cables in that one. They're sort of connected together, so we'll just yank that out of there and uh, plug it into the PV position on the new controller, which is number three. Uh, this last one down here, and uh, that one should be for the uh, flame sensor. Okay. Oops, and then there's one more again. So we've got also the uh, orange wire coming from the igniter. And that will go into the IGN. Or it comes from the IGN on the old controller, actually. And 
it uh, it will go into the spark position or uh, right here. Okay, so we're all hooked up now, uh, with the exception of the damper cover. So uh, I'm just going to make the connections on this rollout switch here. Okay, we've got the power on, the gas is on. So before I do anything with the thermostat, I'm going to check these connections to make sure there's no uh, gas leaks. Don't see any bubbles there. We are ready. All right, fire away. Yeah, there we go. Yep, there go the burners. Okay, now it's just uh, wait and see if the blower comes on. Oh. Damn. Okay, we ran into a little problem here, and uh, uh, it's something that it was doing before, but uh, it's unrelated to what we already fixed. Uh, we do have uh, an igniter working now. We've got uh, uh, burners that work and a uh, flame sensor that apparently is working, so, so that part is all fixed, but uh, what, uh, what's happening is the blower is not coming on still. So uh, I think the problem with that is this unit right here, which is the blower control, and that's a uh, Lennox BCC 2-4 unit. And the problem is, the way this works is uh, these connections go to the thermostat. When you uh, turn the thermostat to heat and it starts calling for heat, these last two terminals here connect in the, at the thermostat. So there's continuity between the two of them, and that is uh, terminal R and W. Uh, and when that happens, the, it, the, you know, the igniter starts, uh, the burners go, and then after a period of time, uh, it activates one of these relays in here, and I, I think it's the top one, but I'm not sure. And that will start the blower. And what the relay does is it makes a connection between 120 volts that are coming into this unit, which is uh, the L1 terminal, which is this one right here. Uh, there's a label on it, but it's on the inside and hard to see. And it'll make a connection between that terminal and this one up here, which is H. And uh, when that connection is made, 120 volts will run down this wire to the low speed windings on the blower. And it'll start the blower up but that's not happening. Instead, uh, the relay clicks. You get a momentary indication of voltage at this terminal, but it's just momentary and then it goes back to zero. 20 seconds later, it'll try again. You'll get another click. The same thing happens. Momentary voltage here, then back to zero. Then about another 20 to 30 seconds later, uh, the whole unit shuts down and then this will just start clicking like once a second and the voltage here at H will read all over the map, just jumping all over the place. So the problem seems to be that the relay is trying to close, but it's not staying closed. It just hits it and then releases. So uh, I got a new uh, blower control on order now. Uh, BCC3 is the one that replaces this old one. And uh, <clears throat> so we have to wait for that to come in and then uh, when it does, we will continue the video. We'll replace that and try it again. All right, so the new blower control finally showed up and uh, I just hooked it up here. Turn the power off before you do this because there's 120 volts running to that controller and you've got to you know, be in there with your hands messing with that thing. So make sure you turn the power off to the furnace before you start messing with it. 
Uh, it's, um, there it is. It is virtually identical to the old one. I'll show you the old one here. This is the old one, the BCC uh, 3, or I'm sorry, 2-4, BCC 2-4. And this new one is a BCC 3. And all the connections are exactly the same. Um, so it's just virtually, uh, just pull one wire off of the terminal on the old one and put it on the new one in the exact same spot all the way down. Uh, the only difference on this one is that one terminal, it's the uh, 24V terminal there. That one is a little smaller terminal than on the new one, um, than on the old one, rather. And so, uh, and there's two wires that go into that one on both the old one and the new one. But on the old one, uh, the connector is uh, one of those double uh, terminals that are just held together and uh, but so what you have to do is cut those off and you just cut them off they're blue wires and you just splice it into the wire the new wire that comes with the controller and it's got the correct size to go in there so you just splice it together here it's all in the instructions that come with it um, if you have a BCC3 controller already you won't have to do that but if you got one of the older ones, you will. But it's it's really not a big deal. And uh, they've got these little clips. See these little white clip? There's four of those, one on each corner. And on the old one, uh, you know, I pretty much had to cut those off with a little uh, pair of wire cutters because they're they're stuck in there, and they've got a little flange on the back that spreads out once you stick it through the hole. So uh, I just cut those off and then pulled the remnants of them out with a pair of needle nose pliers. And then the new one came with a new set of those uh, clips already in it. So you just plug them into the holes that are already there and just press them in and, and they're good to go. So, uh, so that's it and we are ready to test this thing out now. Okay, we've got the pilot. And we've got burners. So now, just wait and see if the fan comes on. Ho oh, ho! There it is! Oh, that's fantastic! All right, looks like we've got a success story going here, uh, finally. <laughs> um, that thing needed quite a few things, but uh, anyway, it's working now, so uh, happy to see that. Okay, thanks for watching, and good luck with your own projects.